hey, are you considering buying the Perception Outlaw kayak? If you are, you're gonna wanna stay tuned because today I'm gonna do an on the water review of this kayak today and let you all know what my impressions are after this being my second time having it out as far as like stability and other key factors go when it comes to kayak fishing. If this is your first time by my channel, my name is Ryan. I'm the host of Rhino Joe Outdoors and y'all better stay tuned. guys so i'm gonna roll up here got this nice little eddy here i think this is a little bit deeper pool Let's see if we can't catch something all right guys so i'm about i'm usually around like 200 pounds and i've got you know a little bit of gear in here i didn't bring a ton of stuff with me i was trying to keep it simple which is kind of my goal for this kayak but um 200 pounds um some gear you can see i still got about an inch um before it reaches the top of this scupper hole um and as far as standing goes i can move the seats really high i mean really easy to stand up in you know let me grab my paddle here if you look at the stability oh there went my coffee that's how stable this sucker is <laughs> that's the sacrifices i make for you guys but as you can see super stable i mean i didn't even think about flipping there um, as with any kayak you never want it to get your head and be reaching outside of the kayak i don't care how stable it is if you are trying to reach for something you want to keep your body in line with the center of the kayak and try to reach if you're going to but you always want to try to get it as close to the edge of the boat um, because that's how most people flip when you're out kayak fishing. One of my favorite features so far about this kayak is a lot of times I like to do this. I like to pull up in an eddy like right along the side of the bank. Kind of get myself stopped there. And you can usually try to use your paddle and push yourself up against the bank to kind of hold you in place. And then once you do that, nice thing about this is you stick it in this extra paddle holder right here and it's actually right here down by your hand pretty neat little uh feature on this kayak all right so i did a little did a little fishing here so um i'm gonna go ahead and put my rod back here and these uh they call them double barrel rod holders so you can slide it in there um if you're worried about your rod coming out you can actually turn it over like this and you can use this bungee strap to go over your reel right there keep make sure it stays in there they're actually at a nice angle so they're angled back and you're not worried about catching them in the trees got a really nice tank well sorry for how jankety it looks but that's my camera equipment right there got a camera stand and just some basic soft plastics i do have all those rod holders on that this is my old kayak crate from my old kayak um when i had the uh jackson kayak so i just kept it the same it's all strapped down in there with the lashes so that's pretty sweet um it's very in there very good plenty of room back there and then up front you have uh this front tank well area i have a little thing with some crankbaits in there and then i also have my other camera stick in there um really nice if you're going camping or something there is plenty of room for a you could put probably a really large or a couple smaller um, waterproof um, bags down in there that way you can keep all your camping gear dry um, one thing about this kayak is it doesn't have any in-haul storage from the factory so if you do want in-haul storage you've got a plate right here where you could put in a plate um, a waterproof plate if you wanted some waterproof storage like to put your phone or something um, and then also in the back right there is another one and then you have a really nice plate right there where you could use to mount like a trolling motor uh, or power pole or whatever you want to do um if you want to see the full walkthrough where i looked underneath the hull 
Um, I'm gonna link that in the YouTube card so you can see where I turn it over, walk around, the whole thing. But today I really just kind of wanted to focus on how this thing handles on the water and how it does fishing in the creek, which is why I bought it. You can stretch out your legs. That's something that's really nice. Um, plenty of room to stretch out your legs. In the summertime, I like to do this. A lot of times, get your feet in the water if it's hot. But then you also have these cool little feet rests here, which I kind of like if I'm really aggressively paddling for some reason for me. I like to have my feet up like that and not just hanging down. You got these sweet gear tracks here if you want to mount a fish finder. Pretty nice little kayak. Got my cup holder over here for my coffee that I dumped in the water for you guys, testing the stability. What I'm gonna show you now, I've got my little rod there. Um, just kind of sitting there on the deck. But I'm gonna go paddle around this and try to go upstream here. But with the way this hole is designed, you wanna make sure you go straight into that current because if you slightly at all get off kilter, it's gonna pull this kayak really fast. Just trying to keep that bow upstream. See how it's starting to pull? So I'm paddling on one side, gotta get that bow going straight. So I'm over here by this shoal. And at this point, for me, I'm gonna step out. Really easy to step out of this kayak. Um, I did forget to bring something that I'm usually very uh, passionate about and that is a drag strap. And then we're gonna jump back in here. And just in case you're wondering, I'm still mourning the loss of my coffee because I'm not taking a risk of drinking that after it's been in this creek water because I don't want to spend the next three or four days on the toilet riding the porcelain pony because I drank a bunch of creek water. Easy to go up a little riffle there. I did have to walk it up. Um, I think in most kayaks you'd kind of have trouble paddling up that. So got a little bit deeper pool here. Got a little see how this current comes through right alongside here and you see those foam bubbles so i'm going to fish this little area real fast here and get my lure caught in a tree got it out let's try to be a little bit better than that so what i'm going to do here is just use a one-arm paddle try to maintain my position out here because I want to fish along this little shoreline here where hopefully there's a smallmouth bass hanging out in here. That's something. That was probably a rock bass or a green sunfish or something. Once again, I cast over that branch again. Looks like we got a little one of the things about being able to easily stand up and fish is you're not a, I'm not afraid at all to do this. We got a shoal out here that you can't really see unless you're standing up. So paddling upstream in some, you know, moderate current and like a deeper pocket isn't bad at all. Super easy. Uh, I'm going to slide my, my 
kayak paddle in there and if i wanted to i can turn around i'm like actually sideways in my seat here if i wanted so, so let's say i get over here to a fishing hole and i want to turn sideways and put my feet in the water or maybe i want to turn sideways and access stuff in the back here um really stable no issues there so i'm going to reach around here grab my um, grab my pole and try to fish this little spot right here. I feel like I've been fishing so much with that Ned rig recently. Feels weird to hold a casting rod. Oh, there we go. There's a little small mouth. See, made that little switch. A little bit more of a this water is a little bit cloudy so he came up and swiped at it as soon as i paused it there i tell you what if you uh have never adventured out let's try to keep from injuring him i tell you what yeah it's a little fish but if you never adventured out and caught these creeks smallmouth they're so much fun and during the summertime this is actually memorial day weekend coming up and the lake's probably super crowded. Um, coming out on these creeks, and especially when you can get a secluded one where there's not a lot of people, it'd be so much fun getting out, catching some smallmouth, getting away from the crowd. And as far as my paddle goes, I've got this Bending Branches Angler Scout. I've got the 250 centimeter model. And for me, for the height of this seat, and for this kayak, this actually works really well. I bought this one for my native Slayer Max Propel as a backup in case the pedal drive goes out, but it actually works really well for this kayak. So pretty sweet that it works for both of them. Oh, there's one, there's one. All right, All right little guy. All right, another little smallie on the mid rig, right up there off that tree. Started to go to the other side, fished the other side and saw this tree here with this breaking current. Kind of figured, I figured there'd either be a smolly or a spot on there. So let that little one go. If we're not zeroing out, might not be giants, but they're fun. There we go. That's a little bit nicer one. Oh, that's a rock bass, I think. Nope. Yeah, that's a rock bass. That's a chunky rock bass. That's a nicer rock bass for I've been catching out of here. Let's let that one go. Key to me catching that rock bass right there was a very accurate cast. And if you're interested in the rod combo that I'm using, to fish these Ned Rigs. I'm gonna put it up in the YouTube card up here. And uh, you all can check that video out on this combo that I'm using and it's worked great for me. I will tell you what I think are some of the pros and cons for this kayak. So number one uh, pro is just the price, the value. Um, and I'm not talking cheap. Cheap's different than value. You get a lot of features that are packed into this kayak for the price point that it is it goes to show you how far fishing kayaks have come and uh even uh you know manufacturers like perception are really realizing what uh you know a great market there is out for the, there for these kayaks um you get a lot of features packed in this kayak for uh and around 700 um number two for the pro would just be the fishability of this thing i love the way the deck is laid out it's super simple and it's really easy to fish out of. If, uh, if you're new to fishing kayaks, I would not be scared to get in this. Um, there are some kayaks out there that are um, a little bit more, need more of a learning curve. This one is easy to step in and start fishing. And then number three for the pros would just be the stability of this thing. With the way that the hull is designed, it's a extremely stable. Um, and as you saw in my video, like, you can you i think you'd really have to try to tip this thing and so number four for the positive is just going to be the seat 
The seat on this thing is super comfortable. I was a little nervous at first with how high it is, but it's extremely stable still. And it's super easy with that seat height to stand up and be able to sit back down comfortably. Um, if you needed to, you could always put, use one of these mounts to do like a stand assist strap. Maybe if you have some bad joints in your knees or have a little bit more trouble with your back to be able to stand. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to some of the negatives. Number one negative, if you're looking for a kayak that you wanna use in streams with a lot of rapids, um, I probably would shy away from this. For me, fishing out in areas like this, I used to do a lot of this in the summertime. So in the summertime, I don't care to get out and wade. And even in the wintertime, um, I'll wear some waders or something so that my legs don't get wet. And instead of having to just, if I had to just paddle up some of these rapids, like it would be a deal breaker. But as far as coming down, it was perfect. But um, it will, like it is really hard to go cross current. So if you're doing a lot of fishing in streams where you have like a bunch of flow and you need to go cross current, it might not be the kayak for you. So negative number two, is just going to be the lack of in-hole storage um, i personally like in-hole storage especially like when if you're doing a float trip you can put if you're putting a bunch of weight in your kayak with your camping gear you can put it way down in the bottom it keeps that center of gravity low and keeps all that gear inside where even if i usually still would put it in dry bags but you know that it's not going to get wet so when i was going through my pluses i actually forgot one so that's why I'm up here now, but um, the final plus on this kayak and the thing that I really like about it is how lightweight it is. It is super lightweight. I'm very sure that it's less weight than my old Jackson Cuda kayak, and it makes it really easy to get in and out of the water. Hey, look at what I found. I'm sitting here, I saw something shiny and blue in the water. Heck yeah, baby. I think that's a Berkeley Flicker Shad. Free bait time. Sweet. Somebody probably lost that when they were floating downstream trying to fish along these riffles and lost that. So if you lost this crankbait, it now uh, belongs to uh, Rhino Joe Outdoors. And I appreciate your donation and all your support. All right, guys. So that's all I have for today. So hopefully if you're considering buying um, one of these kayaks, that this makes your decision a little bit easier and gives you kind of like a real on the water review for this thing. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. If you have any other questions about this kayak that you want answered, uh, please feel free to comment below and let me know what you got. And as always guys, I appreciate each and every one of you guys coming out with me today. And uh, don't forget, if you get a chance, get outside, do something awesome, and take somebody with you if you get a chance. I see you guys in the next one.